I have a question for everybody. Let's start with a question. Who in this room is a wise person? Who would be willing to raise their hand and say, you know what, I am a very wise person, all right? No one? You're like, that's a trap, right? Because the wise people know that's a trap, all right? So Webster's Dictionary defines wise as someone who possesses deep understanding, keen discernment, and a capacity for sound judgment. Well, maybe this is why we lean on the old cliche, another year older, another year wiser. How many of us have ever said that or heard that before, right? Heard it before, all right? None of you have ever said it. This is such a humble, I don't know why I'm preaching this morning, all right? It's such a humble group. All right, the implication behind that is all you have to do is turn another page on the calendar, right? Just pass another year worth of time and you will become wiser. You will grow in your depth of understanding. You will grow in your discernment. You will have a bigger and better capacity for sound judgment, all right? That is the cliche. That's what we talk about because we think that with years come wisdom, comes wisdom. Well, the University of San Diego developed a test to measure just how wise you really are. So if you ever want to figure out how wise you are, there's tests online. In fact, last night I was researching and I took a test on wisdom and I didn't know how to finish it. So there you go. All right. (laughs) It tested three areas of wisdom and at the end of it, it's like, oh, this really has no answer. Just you might want to grow in some of those areas. And I'm like, this is the dumbest test. I'm, I will never take this again. That's, that's what I learned from that. But the University of San Diego, they come up, came up with a test and basically they measure seven characteristics. And what they do is they have a scale of disagree versus agree or strongly disagree to strongly agree. And they give you seven statements and how you answer the seven statements will determine scientifically whether or not you're wise. And I'm not going to read you the statements, but they will, I will tell you what they test. Basically, they test decisiveness, how well and how quick you are to make a decision. They test self-reflection, how much you think about yourself or wonder about yourself. Pro-social behaviors, are you good in public? Another one is social advising. When people come up and ask you for advice, can you give some good social advice? Emotional regulation, Are you able to keep it together when times go tough, when times go rough, or when the storms of life come crashing in? Are you able to stand in the midst of them? They also test your acceptance of divergent viewpoints. How well can you rationalize other people's arguments? And the last one is spirituality. And that one's just kind of, if there's something else beyond yourself, that's how you know you're wise, all right? Now, Dr. Karen Wallant says, if you want to become wiser each and every day, all you have to do is pause. She says that when you pause with the intent of allowing wisdom to arise, we become more able to take actions that best support our physical health and our emotional well-being and that of others. Interesting. You just allow wisdom to arise as if it's something already planted within you. Now, in today's passage, James, 2,000 years before this article was written on health and well-being website, say 2,000 years earlier, he addresses the same question, but he approaches it from a totally different perspective and gives a totally different answer. So are you ready to look at this question in the book of James this morning? All right, James chapter 3. Let's flip it and find it together. I'm not on James chapter 3. I don't know, sometimes you might think that preachers just automatically open there. Or some, I know some pastors, they open up to the middle and they tape their sermon notes in here and they pretend like they're just preaching out of the Bible. I'm like, it's just, I don't have that here. So let's go with us together to James, all right? So if you're new to your Bibles, go toward the back. You should find Revelation, not Revelations, Revelation. And you go back to the left You're going to pass one little Jude, three Johns, two Pete's, and you will arrive at James chapter 5. Go back to your James chapter 3 or page 1119. This is part 7 going through the book of James. So if you've been with us, maybe you got a little 
bookmark in there. Maybe you're just used to turning there by, the, by now. But we've been going seven weeks. This is our seventh week in the book of James. If you've missed any of the messages up to this point, you can find them on our website. I'm trying to give those of you who are new to your Bible some extra chance and time to get there. As we open today, we are in James chapter 3, starting in verse 13. Just six short verses for you today. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let them show it by their good life, by deeds done in the humility that comes from wisdom. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. Such wisdom, quote unquote, does not come down from heaven, but is earthly, unspiritual, demonic. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, there you find disorder and every evil practice. But the wisdom that comes from heaven is first of all pure, then peace-loving, considerate, submissive, full of mercy and good fruit, impartial and sincere, peacemakers who sow in peace reap a harvest of righteousness." Let's pray this morning together. God, we thank you so much for who you are. And God, we thank you that that you meet us here this morning. God, we ask as we open up your word, as we go through this text in the book of James, God, we ask that by your mercy and grace, you would open up the scriptures to us. And God, we ask that you would also burn our hearts to know more about what you say about wisdom. And Lord, you would turn our burning hearts into actions that would live out our faith. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Today we're talking about wisdom. And so let's carefully explore this, the next six verses in our journey through the book of James. And as a way to chart the course for this morning, we will first begin by highlighting James' big idea. And then second, we will consider two opposing wisdoms mentioned in the text. And it's clear, demonic wisdom versus heavenly wisdom. Both legs of our journey will provide areas of application for us today. So in short, we're going to look at the big idea and the two wisdoms. Are you ready this morning? All right, here we go. First, the big idea. Going back to that first verse, it says, Who is wise and understanding among you? James starts with a question. This section is a clear break from the one before. He will ask a question here, and then next week when we go to chapter 4, he will start with a question there. And some people say you can put those two together and find a a larger stream of thought. We're going to stop and just look at these six verses today. But he asked that question. And you have to ask yourself the question, well, who is he directing this toward? Who is the intended audience that's supposed to hear this question? Because remember last week, he tells the group of people, don't become teachers. Remember that was his advice. Like Some of you should not become teachers because teachers are held to a higher standard. So is this question directed at teachers? Yes, especially those who are aspiring to be teachers. Again, last week, the warning and the advice. Hey, don't become a teacher. Because teaching involves the tongue, and although the tongue can boast of great things, the tongue is also a fire. It's a world of unrighteousness. It's, it's able to defile you and the one to whom you're speaking. And so James says, just, just don't become a teacher. We talked about last week, right? Last week was a hard passage. Welcome to another one, and it's me who gets to preach it this morning. Last week was the tongue. Now we get to the actions of life. So is this directed at teachers? Yes, But is this question directed at only teachers? No. Remember the original audience of the book of James or the letter that he he wrote to the Christians who were scattered abroad. So this isn't just to the teachers and the land. Listen up. Everyone else 